Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is start a new project. And we can do that by either going to the menu here and choosing new project, or we can go to the toolbar right here and start a new project. Now, when we do that, nothing really happens. It starts a new project, but you don't really see it, and it's not obvious how you can save it. So what I prefer to do is go to our preferences under options. Right down here is our preferences and go to Project, and hit this button right here, Prompt to Save on New Project. If we choose this and hit OK, now if we make a new project right here, it opens up this dialog where we can save it. I'm going to save it to my hard drive, hard drive audio. Now, if you have an extra hard drive, it's a good idea to put your projects on that separate drive, especially if you're dealing with bigger sessions. So I'm going to save it there, and name it New Song. So now the file is saved to the hard drive. And that happens every time we make a new project. Go to the directory, and it's right here. This is our project file. Now the only problem with doing this is it gets kind of messy when we start recording audio. Let's do that. Let's make a new track right here by double clicking, put it into record, and let's record some audio right here. Just a few pieces. Let's make three of them. Now let's go back to our directory and see what happened. In addition to our project file right here on the hard drive, we have all these files here. Three audio files and three waveform files, which shows us the waveform that we created. So you can see it'll get pretty messy if we're dealing with a whole song. Many different tracks recorded, many different audio files, all spread out on our hard drive. So for organization purposes, this is not the best way to do it. So let's instead put them all in a folder. Let's delete these. Let's make a new project. Again, it opens the dialog to save it, but this time we're gonna call it new song and go down here to this little button, create subdirectory for project. If we click this and hit save, now this project file is in its own folder. Let's go to the directory, and it's right here. We have a folder for new song. And if we open it, there's our file. So now if we go into record, the audio files are going to be in this folder, keeping our hard drive a bit neater. So let's do that. Make a new track, go into record, and instead of hitting the record button, down here, Let's use the keystroke. On the PC, it's Control R. On the Mac, it's Command R. And just hit it, and it goes into record. Let's do it three times again. And again, we'll take a look at it. Here's our folder, nice and neat. Here's our project file, and here are the audio files. Now, this is a bit better, but it could still be a bit confusing. If you have thousands of audio files and many different project files, if you save many versions, it can still get pretty confusing. So let's take this one step further. Let's delete this again, go back to Reaper, and let's open the preferences again. Down over here is another option, Open Properties on New Project, which is basically the project settings, which is how we set things on a project-by-project -project basis, not globally. Let's check it, hit OK, and now it's created a new project. Once again, the dialog opens. It automatically defaults to creating a subdirectory for the project. It stays where we leave it. We'll type a new song, hit OK. But this time, this opens up, Project Settings. This is the settings we create on a project-by-project -project basis, which is separate from our preferences, which is global for the entire computer. So by default, it's set like this. 44.1 is our sample rate. 120 is our tempo, time signatures 4-4. So by having this open automatically, we can change this on the fly for each project. Let's go to the Media tab right here. There's an option right here to change the recording path, which is where the audio files are going to be saved. 
Let's click right here and name it Audio Files. And now Reaper is going to create a folder for our audio files. And that's where they're going to be saved. So now let's record some audio. Make a new track, go into record. And now let's see the directory. Again, we have a folder. We have our song file right here. And we have a folder for our audio files. That's a lot neater. We could list them by name, by date modified, and they're in their own separate folder for organization purposes. That's a lot neater. So the project files are out here, and the audio files are in here. Now this is just for this project. If we want to make it a default, we can go back to our project settings, either here, project settings, or hitting this toolbar button for project settings. So right from here, we can go down to this button and hit Save as Default Project Settings. But before we do that, we can make changes to it. Instead of using WAV files, we can use AAF files, MP3s, or any of these options. We can use 24-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit. So we can change anything here or anything over here to be our default. Our tempo, the time signature, the time base for items which we'll get to later. But for now, we want all our audio files in their own folder. So if we keep this like this and save it as a default, every new project is gonna behave that way. So let's make a new one. We'll save it as new song. It's gonna make a new folder. It opens the project settings and it automatically creates a folder for recording because we saved it right here. But because this opens each time, we could also change it. If this song is 130, we could change it here. Time signature could be 3-4. And then this project is going to have these changes. But if you don't want the project settings open on each new project, we could then turn it off right from here. So it's still going to save our defaults. It's just not going to open on every new project but that's your personal preference. Down over here is how we save or back up our projects. By default, this option is turned on. So every time we hit save, it's gonna create a backup file of the previous save version. This way you always have a backup of the last save version. So if I hit save over here, save project, or hit it over here, save project, it creates this backup right here. Let's switch it to list and list it based on date modified. And here's our project file and here's the backup. So if I save it again, it changed the time. The new one is saved at 126 and the backup is from 125. So we always have a backup copy, but we could do much more than that. Let's go back to our preferences. Over here, we could choose to keep multiple versions. Every time you hit save, you're going to get a new version. And they do add up, but they're always good to have because the project file is very small. And if you make a mistake, you can always go back to it. But instead of choosing this option, I like this one timestamp backup. That does the same thing, except it timestamps it. It tells you what time you made the backup. So if we choose this one and hit save, let's do it one, two, Three times, go to the directory. We have three files that are timestamped. One, two, and three. Those are our backups in case we make a mistake. If we made a mistake on the newest project and we saved it, we can still go back to these based on that timestamp when we save them. And again, these are going to add up. If we make three more, one, two, three. Now we have six of them. So it saves backups based on the time in which you saved them. Here's our date and here's our time. But there's still other options. Let's go back to our preferences. By default, every 15 minutes, it's gonna make a backup. And you can choose when that happens, when not recording, when stopped, or any time. So no matter what, every 15 minutes, it's gonna create a backup. Now, personally, 
I like to go a bit quicker. I like to leave it and we're not recording. So it only creates a backup in between recording. And I change this to three minutes. So every three minutes is going to create a backup. And also, we can timestamp those. So if we choose this right here, each one of these auto backups are going to be timestamped, just like the ones up here, which are created when we hit save. With the auto backups, we don't have to. So now, every time we hit save, it creates a backup. And also, every three minutes, it creates a backup. And they're all going to be in this folder, which we can sort by date modified. Here's the main project file, and these are the backups. And all the audio files or media files are in this folder. So anyway, that's starting a new project in Reaper. It's a great way to keep our projects organized in their own folders with all the media items contained inside. Makes it a lot neater for backing them up or sending them out for someone else to work on them. So anyway, that's starting a project in Reaper. Next, we'll take a look at the tracks. Let's go. Ah!